At this point in the summer, it's possible the kids are slowing down. And if the screen time to sunshine ratio is off balance, get them back outside and moving by making it a family thing. And my next guest is a big believer in getting the whole family up and moving every morning. And she says exercising together creates memories and strengthens bonds. I think we know that, but Studio 5 Fitness contributor Emily Nelson wants your family to try it if you're not trying it already. So let's just talk about that, getting your family going together and some of the benefits. Yeah, so I think we think about that and moms and grandmas are out there going, yeah, right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, it seems really like a chore to get everybody moving. I wish I have confession time and I'm start, sometimes I do confessions here. I wish I was that mom that had the perfect summer chore chart and the activities. It's just not who I am. So this summer I was like, I know that's not gonna happen with late nights and holidays and just extracurriculars, things kind of fly off the handle. So we decided this summer, we are gonna make it a priority that a couple times a week, we are gonna get up and moving as a family. And I will tell you, the benefits are unmatched. I think so many times we know the benefits of movement, right? I'm on here all the time talking about it, but things just about like endorphins, getting them up and out the door before they get on screens. As soon as those screens are on, the transition time, yeah, <laughs> the transition time to anything. Um, another thing we see is it gets them motivated. So when we get out the door, we get moving. When we come home, getting chores, getting dressed, getting ready happens so much faster. Sure, they're in the mode. They're like ready to yes. go for the day. Yeah, like and you that. just, it. they're happier and blood sugar levels are stabilized. We make good choices. They're more motivated to move throughout the day. But one of my favorite benefits is the un interrupted time of chatting with your kids. We don't have any cell phones or devices when we're out moving. In fact, they asked me, do you have any footage of you guys moving this summer? I was like, I honestly don't bring my phone. We just chat and being able to talk with your kids and have that time for me is the greatest benefit. Yeah, you hold them hostage for a little Absolutely, minutes, just a little bit. So you can talk to them. So let's start with the littles. What yeah. are your ideas for those younger kids? Okay, well, first of all, they're the easier ones. I, that's, <laughs> I think you can force them to do a little more than the older ones. Yeah, and just like, they're like, it's an activity. It's the way you phrase it, right? So if you're saying like, hey, we're gonna go out, we're gonna get moving, like that's gonna be. So one thing is adventure walks or like a hike. So first of all, Going at their pace is really important. I don't think we can't be like, okay, we're out there, we're on this huge hike. It's like move at their face, make it fun, have I spy, 20 questions, things like that. Um, we like to do track workouts because I have all ages of kids. Yeah. And so what we'll do is have my little guy bring his Strider bike or his bike and he'll take off and start to circle. And so he thinks it's fun why we can still do what the olders wanna do and things like that. Also getting them involved organic play at the playground, something they wanna do. Just getting them outside before those screens come on is so important. And I think sometimes you mentioned the track for older and younger, I yeah. think playground, you'll be surprised your teenagers will hop on those swings. You know, oh, totally, you yes. But um, what are some specific ideas for older kids? I mean, I have, I have a high schooler, I'm always like, yeah. let's go for a walk. He's like, eh. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's so hard. I will say like, that's when you're gonna have to kind of force them to go, but then usually they're the ones where this pays off the most. And so for me is getting them involved in the planning. So we have like, you can create a bucket list, like, what are some activities you want to do this summer and have them help create it, have them research hikes in the area of something. What we like to do when we go to the track with my older daughter, because she does want to get in better shape. She does want to like start getting there, but she doesn't want to go and run. So we'll be like, instead of being like, okay, we're going to run a mile around the track. We'll say, we're going to jog the straight. We're going to walk the around. And we kind of make it like a timed workout, stuff like that. We also let them choose older kids. What are they into right now? Do they want to play tennis or pickleball? That's a big one at our house. Are they into soccer? It doesn't have to be such a structured workout. Let them choose the activity of something they're into and that makes it more motivating. And they know, okay, on Thursday, we're going to play tennis and then they get excited about it. And that is your next tip that yeah. you, sometimes you'll just let each kid choose an activity and then do you kind of rotate? Where you're like, today's Bobby's turn. Yes, yeah, so that's what we've been doing is we have like three times a week, just with their extracurricular schedule, we have about three days a week and we let them choose. Like one day is gonna be a more like structured like track workout. One day is going to be someone gets to choose the activity, whether it's like tennis or soccer or whatever. And then the last day is just kind of like a free, but I have three kids, so that works for me. Mm -hmm. And so we let them all be involved in choosing, and that makes a huge difference as well. And, that, and then also just organic play. I think we overlook just getting 
kids outside, if they're going swimming, if you're going swimming that day and you know that's gonna be their activity, that's great. I don't think we have to overthink it too much. It's just about having activities of movement so that they can feel those benefits of getting their heart racing, endorphins pumping, and all of that stuff is what so important. What other type of org organic play? Would that be like playing a softball game, playing yes. kickball, something like yeah. that, just a Just even activity. like passing the soccer ball back and forth. Like I don't think we'd be like, okay, we need to run sprints on the thing. Just like, okay, <laughs> we wanna get better at dribbling the ball. Like that's organic play, right? Like I think of anything that you just, kids would naturally go out and do, going down the slides, or even if you have like a lot of people, little for littles, they have those bounce houses, you yeah. know, like if you can bounce house it things like that, but it is getting hot. That's exercise. So that's one thing is it's so hot. And so that's why I'm such a proponent of like early in the morning, mm -hmm. because I don't know about you guys, but the worst thing in the world is taking your kids on a hot hike. Uh, <laughs> worst thing for me. Oh uh, yeah, but like the complaining <laughs> is nonstop. So either like an evening and early morning, like basing one it around evening, that. It's still like 90 I degrees. I know, I know. Eight night. So I like the early morning idea. Yes. Okay, now lastly, invite the friends. Yes. Just give in, bring the friends along. Plus we love our kids' friends. Yeah, I found that too. Like we were trying to do something the other day and they were like, I don't want to do it. And I'm like, hey, bring a friend and everybody. And then it gets them excited about it. They have someone to chat with. You can still have no screens and still create those memories and the stories like me and my husband always like to share stories from our childhood and it's just time that you can't replace and creates those healthy habits and talking about those stories what are the things that we can talk to our kids about that let them know exercise is important I know example of course but what are some things we can verbally talk about to them so my favorite way is obviously example and then next it would be talking to them about how it makes them feel so like after we've done like a track workout or something, I'd be like, you know, you didn't really want to get out of bed, but how do you feel? You know, I'll be like, do you feel better? And they're usually like, yeah, I feel so much more awake. And just kind of getting them to cue into their own body is so important because that's where the habits are going to be formed. The, my greatest goal is that my children will fall in love with movement because the way it makes them feel like mind, body, and spirit. And so I think having those conversations, how does that make you feel? And they'll start to recognize and then they'll start to crave that sort of movement. And also having honest conversations about there are so many days I don't want to move my body. Like that is normal, but don't you see how once we start moving, you really did feel better and they'll be like, yeah. Yeah, you know. I like that, letting them mm -hmm. be honest. Be yeah. honest as a Be friend. honest okay. about it because there's times where we're like, I want to sleep that extra hour or whatever, but it really does feel so good. Thank you so much, Emily. Thank You've you. given us some great ideas for the summer as we're wrapping up, sadly, but oh. here we go.